Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. A man appeared at my door, claiming my son was his. Now my entire future is unraveling. A stranger appeared at my door claiming my son and tearing apart everything I believed in two years. I am 33. Male. I've been dating my fiance for five years, and it was perfect for me when she told me she was pregnant a year ago. I had planned to marry her so for me it just meant we were getting an earlier start on building a family. I didn't mind getting married immediately but my fiancés didn't want to get married while she was pregnant so we decided to get married in two years when she must have given birth and our baby had grown a little more and she had weaned them off breast milk. It sounded like a good plan to me so I agreed. I would have done anything for her because I loved her so much. About two weeks after I got the news of Lisa's pregnancy, my brother's wife, my sister-in-law, called me to tell me to take a paternity test. I joked saying the baby wouldn't be born until the next eight months so was in no rush. She insisted saying that I could take a paternity test before a baby was born and that one of her friends did it. I asked her why she was saying this and where all of this was coming from. She told me that she overheard my wife speaking to her sister about not knowing how to go about everything and that she just made one mistake and now she wound up with a child. I didn't believe her because she somehow found a way to be in everybody's business and what she said didn't conclude that she had an affair with someone else. It could have just been that she wasn't ready to have kids yet. After all, we had planned to wait for some years after we got married to have children. She tried her best to convince me, but it didn't make sense to me, so I laughed at her and told her she had absolutely nothing to worry about and that I trusted my fiancés with my life. It's been almost two years, and we are preparing for our wedding. One evening I was home alone while my fiancés went out with her girls to have fun. The doorbell rang and it surprised me because I wasn't expecting anyone. I opened the door and right there stood a very handsome man. He was well-groomed and seemed like he was wealthy. He asked to come in but I didn't respond, and he then asked if this was Lisa's residence. I responded and let him in. He said I must be Lisa's fiancés and that he was sorry to just be barging into my home now but I should know that he doesn't mean any harm and just wants what is rightfully his. This man seemed oddly familiar but I couldn't remember where I had seen or met him. He said that my son was his and he had proof to show. He showed me my son's paternity test. Immediately I felt like I couldn't breathe and I was choking on my saliva. I remembered my sister-in-law telling me to take the test and how I laughed at her completely trusting Lisa all the way. Lisa never gave me any reason to doubt her but both my sister-in-law and now some man in front of my door couldn't be lying about the same thing. I told the man that I didn't know who he was and that he needed to leave. He left his card in the test with me asking if I could do the paternity test to confirm if I didn't believe him. He also said he hoped we could settle this and he doesn't have to involve his lawyers. I was panicking. I called my sister-in-law immediately to get more information. I asked her to tell me again including all the details about why she asked me to take a paternity test. She said she was to meet up with my fiancé and send her sister and then pick out some things for the wedding. This was before we decided to move it. As she came closer to them she noticed that my fiancé was frantic so she wanted to give them a little time to speak. She wanted to give their privacy before announcing herself. Still she heard Lisa's sister asking her if she knew who the baby was. That was all she heard but she knew that something had to be up because of the tone of the conversation. I told my sister-in-law about the man that came to visit. She told me to confront my fiancé about it. She was ready to fight for me but I told her to calm down because I wanted to handle things in my own way. I didn't want everything to blow up in my face, so I decided that I would take the paternity test without letting Lisa know. If it was true that my son wasn't really mine then we would have a problem but, if that was not the case I would prefer if she didn't know because I don't want her to think that I ever doubted her. My sister-in-law thought that was smart and asked me to keep her updated. The results of the paternity test came in a few weeks ago. While waiting my fiancé could tell something was up because I wasn't myself. I mean how could anyone be normal knowing what was at stake? My son whom I have loved, since the first day I heard that my fiancé's was pregnant to having to watch him grow in his mom for a little over nine months, and then having him here with us. My son whom I would sacrifice anything for to have a wonderful life is not mine. I was heartbroken. I'm not sure how I would get over this. I didn't tell anyone at home about it for days. It felt like I was trying to hold on to whatever family I had because I knew it would all be over once I confronted my fiancé about it. Somehow I needed to face reality no matter how hard it was. Lisa came home from work on a Friday, and we were to prepare for her friend's birthday dinner. I usually get home on Friday before her so she was surprised I wasn't getting dressed and hadn't picked out any clothes. I told her I wasn't going and she asked me why and went on and on about supporting her friends. I asked her if those friends supported her in lying about being our son's father. She seemed shocked but quickly changed her reaction to surprise. She asked me what I meant and I told her she should stop pretending because she knew exactly what I meant. I showed her the paternity test and told her about the guy who came looking for her, who apparently was her ex. She started to apologize saying it was a big mistake that she had regretted ever since, 
and that she never meant to hurt me. Hearing her admit to it just hurt me the more. I was so upset that all I wanted to do was go somewhere very far away from her. How could she know this? and keep it from me all these years. We were going to get married in two months for crying out loud. I didn't like to be deceived or lied to and Lisa knew this. She told me it was a mistake and that she was in her feelings one evening when I wasn't home so she decided to go out for a drink and she met her ex and one thing led to another. From that day she promised to never put herself in a vulnerable position again but the deed had already been done. Her ex tried to get a hold of her several times but she refused and made sure he didn't get through to her. He put two and two together and realized she was pregnant but she never told him our son was his. She wasn't sure and was too scared to take the test as she kept putting it off until it didn't matter anymore. She said my eyes lit with joy when I heard I was going to be a dad so she couldn't hurt me. This was why she decided that ignorance was bliss in this case. She also chose to think that I was the father. If only that's how things work. I left home and planned to not return for the next week. I told Lisa to remove herself and her son from my home and make sure there was no trace of her anywhere. She tried to talk things out with me but there was no use. The wedding was off and I didn't trust her. There was no way we could get married even though I was still deeply in love with her. Feelings don't change overnight, but I honestly wish they did. My sister-in-law said she had hoped she wasn't right, but I knew that was a lie. She was one of those people that liked to say, I told you so. She was nosy, liked to be right about her suspicions and didn't hesitate to rub it in your face. My only regret is my son. I invested too much, but there was nothing I could do. I hadn't married his mother yet, so he wasn't my stepson. Most of my friends were married so I couldn't stay at any of their houses. I decided to do an Airbnb and stay there for a while. My parents were disappointed at what had happened and they wanted to go straight into what that meant for my wedding. My mom and sister were planning the wedding but I wasn't in the mood to go into that. I didn't have the mental energy and capacity for that. All I said was that I wasn't getting married anytime soon and maybe never so they could handle whatever needed to be handled. This is why I couldn't go to my parents' house because they would treat me like a baby and be all up in my business which I didn't want. I just needed to clear my head. I didn't know how to be without Lisa. We had been in each other's lives for a very long time, so how do I erase everything? I'm too hurt to still want to be in my son's life, so I'm going to let him go too, even though it may not be the best for him, but right now I only care about what's best for me. NT, they, your fiancé, knew precisely what she was doing and wanted to pin you down. At least you didn't get married before you found all this out. NT, T, a, you should still try your best to be in your son's life because he may need you. I know it won't be easy though. Next story, cramped house, one bathroom, and 20 guests, why does she insist on hosting? My kids and I dread Christmas at my sister-in-law's tiny home, but no one will speak up. My husband is one of three siblings and they usually rotate who hosts Christmas. It's usually the same people who go every year, give or take a few. It is my husband and I with our two kids, his sister and husband with their three kids, his younger brother and his daughter, his mom and dad, grandma, usually an aunt and uncle and maybe a cousin or two, not to mention his brother-in-law's parents and maybe a sibling come too. I really don't want to sound like I'm this type of person because I don't judge anybody on their house size or their wealth but the issue is that his sister's house is so freaking tiny. It's uncomfortable for everyone there. It actually isn't even an individual house but it is half of a duplex type. There will be about 20 people coming this year and I just think it's ridiculous for her to insist on hosting. They also have a large Great Dane that is on top of everyone. Well, actually, everyone is on top of everyone. I shit you not that half of the guests have to sit on the living room floor to eat. Usually, the older relatives sit at the four-person's dining table. A few people sit on the couch, and the rest of us are standing or sitting on the floor with our plates of food. Oh, and the last big kicker is that there is only one bathroom that constantly smells like crap. My kids always complain about going to this aunt's house because of the reasons I listed. I am siding with them and I said I would talk to dad about us volunteering to host. We don't live in a mansion but we can comfortably fit all the guests, and we have more than one bathroom. Husband doesn't want to because he says it will hurt his sister's feelings, and she already knows how poor they are, and this would be rubbing it in her face. I don't think that should be the case. I think she should want the family to be comfortable. I'm sure she must know we don't love sitting on the floor in that cramped house. I'm not sure if I sound like a spoiled bitch a hole right now or if I'm right. No one is really in a hole here. You have valid points. His sister's place sounds like a really bad place to host 20 people for a holiday's get-together, but your husband is probably also right. His sister's feelings would be hurt by it. Like a lot of poor people, she's probably proud of what little she does have and prickly about what she feels like is charity. It's a tricky situation to navigate. NAH the sister's doing her share by offering to host even though her place isn't really big enough. She hasn't left anyone out and sounds like she's doing her best. On the other hand, it's Christmas and you and your kids obviously want to be comfortable and not eat your food while sat on the floor with a dog climbing over you. But if you insisted on hosting instead, 
I think it'd be rude. Is there a way you can compromise? For example, taking a camping table or suggesting a walk after dinner so you're not all cramped up together but still spending time together. And then heading home after? Or have a second Christmas day with your kids when you get back home? Next story, I altered a thrift store dress for my friend and now her sister says I've ruined her holidays. I love to play seamstress as a hobby. I also love to thrift shop. My best friend has this certain tartan pattern that she absolutely loves and I found a near-perfect replica of it at a thrift store. I was so excited and to me, it doesn't really matter what size it was. I can tailor it to fit my friend. I'm not trying to be insulting, but I have actually never seen a dress this size before and I had to do some pretty serious modifications. And to be honest, the dress was more for fabric than a particular design. I gave it to my friend as an early Christmas present and she absolutely loved it. It made me happy that it made her so happy. I also left her the scraps and leftovers with the instructions that if she ever saw another piece of clothing that I could use it for, please let me know. I guess her sister went digging through the scraps and found the original size of the dress on the tag. I have known both she and her sister since we were all kids, and although I'm best friends with the younger sister, I have never quite seen eye to eye with the older sister. Please keep that in mind while reading the text she sent me. It's cut and paste as I got it. We have been friends since we were kids, and you know how hard it is for me to find clothes. What you did with that dress is a horrible thing to do to me and to other plus-sized women who struggle to find pretty dresses in good that we can wear out. You found one of them and ripped it to shreds to give to her when she can buy her garbage at Forever 21 whenever she wants. I killed for that dress. It would have changed my holidays to have a good go-to in that pattern that I could have worn over and over again, and now I have to stress all over again this year. But you to me and all other plus-sized women who would have loved that dress, why not just give it to me? What is wrong with you? I had no idea this was even a thing. I was trying to do a nice thing for my friend, but honestly her sister didn't even enter my brain until I got that text. My friend says I have nothing to worry about, but the text really bothers me. I'm not sure why. Was I the a-hole? N-T-A as a plus-sized woman myself. I understand your friend's frustration in trying to find a pretty dress that fits well. However, you doing something kind for her sister doesn't make you the A-H. If she had been with you while you shopped and asked you to please leave the dress for her, it would have been a different situation. If you're still feeling guilty, maybe offer to shop with her and help with alterations if you have time. But even if you don't have time for that, you're still. NTA also, I worked at a thrift store for almost a year, and the greater majority of thrift store clothing is either recycled or trashed, so you rescuing the dress is great. Next story. Dirty jokes about my best friend and me ruined everything for wedding guests uninvited. And now my sister-in-law is furious. I, 26, female, am getting married in February 2023 to my fiance John, 29, male. We've been together for four years. Before I met him and for the first year and a half of our relationship I lived with Tammy, 27, female. Tammy and I have been best friends since we met at 12. 13. Tammy and John have a great relationship too. The issue is with some people in my friend group who I met after John and I got serious. For some reason they're all obsessed with the, and they were roommates joke when it comes to Tammy and I. At first it was kind of funny but now it's crossed the line and they won't stop. If I casually mention Tammy is coming along to an outing at least two people will make some dirty sex joke about the two of us. She hit really hard times during COVID and John and I let her stay in the guest bedroom. Cue the jokes about having a maid wink wink nudge nudge. It makes all three of us uncomfortable and I've tried to get them to stop, but because they're my soon-to-be sister-in-law's friends and I am close with sister-in-law who doesn't make these jokes, it's been hard to cut them out or distance because of the tangled web of connections. I should note that I have been very clear that I dislike these jokes and that they're becoming disrespectful to myself. Tammy and John well, last week we all went out and Tammy came along. I was in no mood for these types of jokes and made a note in my phone of everyone who made a joke and how many times they said it. At the end of the night we all went back to my place and I stood up and pointed at the jokesters and said you're uninvited. Out of the eight people who went out with us, four were uninvited. I made it very clear why and explained it again so there was no confusion. The four who were uninvited left the apartment. 
My fiancé is on my side, but my sister-in-law is now fuming. She's super pissed that I've isolated her from her friends because she's obligated to pick family. I said she can still be friends with them so long as they stop the jokes. Naturally, the people who are uninvited are pissed too, and there has been a barrage of passive-aggressive Instagram posts about it and the money they've spent being wasted. N.T. A. Your sister-in-law doesn't get to choose who you have at your wedding. These people disrespected your wishes and your fiancés behind you. It's good that you stood up for yourself and your sister-in-law will get over it. N.T. A. Yes, you put her in a position of having to acknowledge how uncomfortable her friends made you, and she got mad at you rather than standing up for family and decency. Those people sound like creeps. No one who likes you presses a joke well after they know you're hurt by it. Maybe they have a chip about the relationship you're in with your sister-in-law's brother, but who cares honestly? Enjoy your wedding. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.